Today we're going to play a little bit of Diablo 2 to show you a little bit about how the creators of this game had a little bit of knowledge, if not a lot of knowledge. They definitely had some knowledge concerning the occult. Specifically, uh, what I saw on Act 3, I was like, whoa, I've played this game a million times, I've beaten it a million times, but I never noticed this blatantly until now for some reason. So let's check this out. I'm going to uh, have to download, I guess. You were disconnected. Uh, reconnect. All right. Okay, I applied the new patch, version 1.14b. Let's see if we can get in. All right. Here's my account name, Rasmus. I doubt anyone's going to try to hack my ancient uh, account. A couple characters. Oh crap, this character expired. That's uh it's not good, huh? Let's see if I can uh play this character for a few seconds just so she doesn't get deleted. Let's just create my own game called Vive. Vive one two three four five. Create my own game. Cause I don't want those spammers to really spam up what's going on. And the city is on a swamp. It's obviously an ancient Aztec looking Mayan looking city with a pyramid in the center. And this is what I'm talking about right here. This this chalk outline design on the ground is clearly a Haitian Vodon Vive. And a Vive is like a portal to another dimension. It's uh it's like a, a giant sigil you draw on the ground, either in cornmeal. You can do it in chalk if you're on some concrete or stone, but usually it's done on the ground, the dirt, or even a church. Some Haitians are Catholics by day, and then they move the pews, and then they're vote on Haitian voodoo practitioners by night. They draw these designs on the ground. They spill rum on the ground. And they chant the names of the Vodan gods. And they open up a portal, a crossroads, to the dimension of the Vodan gods, which are obviously demons. This is clearly a Vodan Vive. And this is clearly a Vodan Vive as well. It looks like they have snakes on either side. That's more decoration than anything. But this is most definitely a Haitian Vive as well. They have some crescent moons on either side. That's more decorational. But the middle part, I will show you a comparison of a Vive that looks similar to this. Now compare this to this. Do they or do they not look the same? It's pretty obvious the creators of Diablo 2 were somewhat familiar with the occult, somewhat familiar with Haitian Vodan. This is the Vive of the Vodan god known as Legba. I believe there are three main Vodan gods, and in my opinion, they are all demons. They don't show you their realm. They don't pull you through the crossroads into their dimension unless they trust you. And to show loyalty and trust, you have to go through an initiatory process. They don't just pull anyone off the street and make them members. Which is why there are plenty of Haitians which do not practice this. They have to go through a rite of passage to even get through to this. Now, at this point, the demons, the Vodan gods, they have a whole process. They prefer rum because humans have been using rum in the ceremonies for hundreds of years and they prefer certain things and certain sacrifices. And I'm not going to go into the extreme gory details but I will touch upon some of the things later on. Take a look at this one. I'll compare this one side by side with a Vive that looks similar to this. Is this or is this not very similar to this? Most definitely, yes it is. That is a Haitian Vive from 
the Vodon belief system. I tried to match it up the best I could, and the closest that it matches with is the circle in the center of the Vive of the Vodon god known as Simbi. And this is Simbi's Vive. Now, I'm not here to bash on the Vodon belief system, but it is most definitely occult. Even Haitians considered it to be occult. So it's even somewhat taboo within the Haitian culture, but it is definitely more accepted there than it is in other cultures. And there are some Haitians that don't believe it's real. They're jaded. They think it's just all make-believe. There are some initiated Haitians that know for a fact it's real, and they've experienced it firsthand. It looks real to me. I mean, I guess I can't prove it for a fact, but it looks real to me. So, you know, there's a lot of weird stuff going on, um, but obviously this is a, a game where you kill legions of the devil and you kill the devil himself. So in that regard, it's it's not necessarily the worst game in the world. It's, it's a pretty harmless game unless you, I guess, start drawing some Vives on your floor. Don't be drawing these demonic sigils on the floor. And I didn't really explain what a Vive really is, other than it's like a big sigil you draw on the floor. Well, let me explain what a sigil is first. A sigil is the insignia, the logo, if you will, of a demon. And you usually, you usually draw it on a piece of paper. And then you stare at it, and then you chant the name of it or whatever, and that demon will show up, supposedly. I've never done it. I'm not interested in black magic. I'm only interested in protecting myself against it because I know it's real. I know it's real because I've seen too many things in my life which I'll go in to greater detail in the future. But this episode is just talking about Vodon Vives as seen in Diablo 2. Now, it's a logo, it's an insignia. It's a sort of like a king has its own insignia. These demons have their own insignias. Now, did the demons create them, or did humans create them? That's, a, that would, that's actually a good question, and I would say humans probably created them with the intent to summon these demons to the point where these demons don't care who created it. All the demons care about is showing up and uh, tricking you into following them, tricking you into worshipping them. That's the number one thing demons like, is if you worship them. Second, you've started worshiping them, you've given your free will over to them, you've become a slave to them, they might offer a deal, they might offer they'll give you money, fame, riches, or maybe they'll just say, you know what, I'll be your friend and I'll be your protector, blah blah blah. They'll feed you whatever you want to hear. They may even bow before you and call you God. When a demon communicates with you, don't trust a single word out of its mouth, ever. It might mix truth with fiction, truth with lies, just to gain your confidence, but in the end, it's just going to screw you over. Now, this is pretty harmless. I'm not doing any spell. I'm just playing a video game, and these are just artistic decorations on the ground, but I just wanted to point that out that Diablo 2 has actual demonic insignias, actual Haitian Vodon ritualistic voodoo crossroads vives drawn on the ground, which is definitely very interesting. See, this is an Aztec Mayan style chapter, and uh, so it does fit, even though Haiti and Aztec don't exactly go together. And Haitians. Haitians originally come from Africa, so it's really an African tradition that has been taken to Haiti and turned into its own thing. And I believe Africans do practice something similar, but I'm more knowledgeable, barely, on the subject of Haitian Vodan. As I've read two books that have mentioned it, I haven't thoroughly researched it uh, because I don't plan on ever doing it myself. And then here are the gates, and the gates in this chapter, 
also have a little Vive right there, a little Crossroads Vive. The Crossroads is a description for a place that it's just a description of a gateway to their dimension. You cross through a gateway and you go into another dimension. Your body stays in this dimension, obviously. It's all spiritual. Your spirit leaves your body. It goes into the other dimensions. And then you give access of your body to these demonic entities. Very scary stuff. And uh, like I said, this game isn't evil necessarily. As a matter of fact, this game has amazing music. The musician, his name is Matt Ullman. And Matt Ullman is an extremely talented guy. He created the amazing soundtrack of Diablo 1 and Diablo 2. The guitar and the flutes of Diablo 1, they're so good that they made that game phenomenally amazing. Without that soundtrack, the game would, 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 uh, it would hardly be what it is today. Sadly, they did not bring Matt Ullman back for Diablo 3, but they ripped off his style and exactly copied his style to the best of their ability, which, of course, they failed. But they tried. I don't know why they weren't willing to pay him. I find it to be disrespectful not to pay the amazing musician that made the game popular in the beginning. Let's face it, the first time I played Diablo 1, the music stuck out more than anything. I was like, whoa, this is some awesome music. It's all thanks to Matt Ullman. I tweeted him how I'm a fan of his amazing music and I listen to it on a regular basis. And he tweeted thanks as a response. He's a really nice guy. I hope if anyone needs some high quality, the highest of highest of high quality music soundtracks for games like this, that they contact him and try to get him on another soundtrack because he seems to highly excel at that. Here is his Twitter account. Send him a tweet if you're interested in uh, some amazingly just atmospheric dark music for a realistic or a dark uh, game. But this game is pretty fun, even to this day. Even to this day, this game is extremely fun. So that's what this episode is about. I will look for more interesting things in video games, but I'm going to be focusing on old video games. Video games nobody plays anymore. Everyone's all about the new, 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 or, or the weird, crazy little funny games here and there, but I'm going to be playing the old games I used to play back in the day, starting in the early 90s, up until maybe 10 years ago. I'll play a couple new games, like Shroud of the Avatar, maybe. But these old games seem to have a lot of cool little Easter eggs in them that are worth talking about. Until next time, I thank you for watching. This has been John Rasmus with Occult Unmasked. Be seeing you.